Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI promote heaven for unbaptized babies. And does China fear terrorism at the upcoming Olympics? A rare Dead Sea Scroll talks about Christ's return and peace on earth. Stay tuned for this and much more And Jack Van Impey presents. From the world headquarters of Jack Van Impey Ministries, this is Jack Van Impey Presents. International news and in-depth analysis from the award-winning team of Dr. Jack and Rexella Van Impey. Join millions around the globe for 30 minutes of powerful insights. This is Jack Van Impey Presents. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I had so many people say how very much they enjoyed those letters that we shared with you last week. And so we're going to do a couple more right now and trust that your heart will be blessed once again. Keep those letters coming in. We'd love to hear what God is doing in your life and the lives of your loved ones. But Jack, you've got a wonderful letter right there. This is from Mrs. E.N. I'm so thankful for your program. It was during one of your late night broadcasts that my husband Frank accepted the Lord as a Savior. He has since gone to be with the Lord, but what a comfort to know he was ready and that I will soon join him when we hear the call, come up hither. Oh, that great. I just want to thank God so much when I hear something like that or read something like that. This one's about Jack, and I just had to share it with you. When I was in my darkest times, I can remember being sleepless, filled with depression and anxiety and hanging on to my faith by a thread. I would flip through the channels. I still remember the Word of God jumping out of the TV and into my ears as you quoted the Word of God, Jack, in every sentence. I could see the face of a true man preaching a message of warning and hope. I feel like all my prayers and searching had finally been answered by hearing and seeing a man whom the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was using to reach hopeless, lost souls. I was one of them. Praise God, I'm free. Thank you for your obedience to the Lord, Mr. L. S. And thank you for that wonderful letter. And thank you so much for all those letters that are coming in. I'm going to ask Chuck if he would please bring in all those letters again there, Jack. Can, can you imagine all these letters that we're getting now, Jack? Take a look at that. <laughs> and I mean, these are from recent months, folks. And two million people have received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior through our ministry. And we're just so humbled because of it. And I'll tell you, if I started bringing in more, you should see the piles I have at home. Uh, I'd have to get a back brace for Chuck, <laughs> but this is something, and it's because of your love that this has happened. Oh, thank you for your prayers. It means so much to us. All right, Jack, uh, Chuck, uh, that's real muscle building there, <laughs> carrying that back and forth. Thank you so much for helping us out. Appreciate it, and keep those letters coming in, will you please? Let me just say that uh, Richard Bond from Valencia, California wrote to us. He said, I, I was Roman Catholic, and you talk about the rapture so very much. I made up some words that go right or wrong with R-A-P-T-U-R-E-D, rapture. Captured, and I trust that your people might enjoy it. All right, Jack, let's go down the list here, shall we? The first one is the R, resurrection. The Bible teaches in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 to 18, that there's going to be a resurrection of the dead and living believers when Christ says, come up hither in Revelation 4, 1. Let's describe it. And by the way, someone said, you can't find the word rapture in the Bible. You can in the Latin Vulgate by Jerome when it comes to 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, the terms caught up are in the Catholic Bible, rapiamord, raptured, amen. Well, here it is, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, frighten one another no. with these words. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it does to some people because they're not ready. Comfort one another with these words. Are they are. Now, A, ascension. Well, that is exactly what caught up means. When we hear the words come up hither, and we go up in the twinkling when I first Corinthians 15, 52, we ascend to be with Jesus. And P, pre-trib. We're not going to be here for the seven years of tribulation described in Revelation chapter 6 to 18 because chapter 3 verse 10 says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. Now, the word there is, I'll keep you out of it. That's the Greek word ek. If God wanted to say, I'm going to preserve you through it, like some people teach today, he would have used dia, D-I-A. He didn't say, he said, I'm going to keep you ek, out of it. Praise the Lord. T, transformation. We're going to be changed to be like the Lord Jesus. The psalmist said in chapter 17, verse 15, I'll be satisfied when I awaken with your likeness. Philippians 3, 21, who shall change our decrepit bodies that they may be fashioned like unto Christ's glorious body. 1 John 3, 2, when we see Jesus, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him of Christ's return, purifies himself even as he is pure. Not everybody could do this, Jack. I'm amazed because I, I'm just spelling out rapture and he's giving me all the Bible. Isn't that wonderful how the Bible is relevant even to a word like this? Unification, you. Oh, I love that because they've just been called up in Revelation 4 when with the come up hither and now they're singing about it in chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, Christ, to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Watch it out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. But from every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, this is going to be interdenominational and interracial. Uh, we all love God's people, and what a time it's going to be at that hour when we're singing about serving the Lord together here on earth for the thousand years and then forever, Revelation eleven fifteen, in unity. Our redemption, redeemed. Uh, we are waiting for the redemption of our bodies, Romans eight twenty three. The first coming of Christ saves the soul. The second coming of Christ saves the body. And these bodies are going up. E evacuation. Uh, Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape, to escape all these things that shall come to pass on the earth. Luke 21, 36. And D, deliverance. Oh, I love this. First Thessalonians 1, 10. He delivers us from the wrath to come. And thank you so much, Richard Bond. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And you said that Jack has taught you so very, very much. How, what a blessing the ministry has been to you now. This is going to be a blessing to all of us. We are told that as a result of global television ministries, there are Christians even in China, even in China where you can't really get a Bible into the country, are meeting in homes for services. In fact, there are one million Christians in China alone. There you see her, isn't she, darling? Great leap forward in China. Urban Christians are bringing new life to surprising places. Whoa, how wonderful. Doesn't it bless you? A million, a million and yeah. a half there. And they tell us that around the world, wherever this is happening, it's because of television. And this is the means of reaching people. And as you know, Rexel and I are on in every nation on the earth, 247 countries. And guess what? After the rapture, there are 144,000 flaming evangelists in Revelation uh, chapter 7, verses 4 to 8, who are preaching the good news of the coming kingdom. Now, today we are preaching the gospel of grace, that we are saved uh, through unmerited favor. We don't deserve it, but God in His love saves us when we call on the name of Jesus. But after we're gone, after we're raptured, they begin to preach Matthew 24, 14, the gospel of the kingdom. The king is coming. The king is coming. And I'll tell you, it's going to be a glorious time. Rexella, yes. we have a video coming out in September about the coming king. We are preaching the gospel of grace, but we're including the gospel of the kingdom 
as well because we believe it's that near. And it talks about the end of the world in Matthew 24, 3. Wrong. The Greek word there is aeon. There will be no ending of the world. It's a world without end, Isaiah 45, 17 and Ephesians 3, 21. And how can you tell? Well, after you read about the end of the age, which is world in Matthew 24, 3, you turn the page in chapter 25, verse 31 says that Christ shall come in the glorious Father with all his holy angels and he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And that's when he sits on David's throne in Luke 1, verses 32 and 33, ruling over Israel and the Middle East at that hour in history. You know, something that I've always believed, and that is that every single baby, if they die, go right to heaven. And you know, in the Catholic Church, Pope John Paul uh, started the doctrine for them that unbaptized babies would go right to heaven. No more limbo. Amen. Take a look, and here's the man who started it, and that is Pope John Paul. And he was certainly led by the Lord to do that. And now this present Pope, Pope offers hope for unbaptized babies. This came out of the Vatican. And as I say, babies don't do anything. They don't sin. They do go right to heaven. How wonderful to know that, Jack. Well, I think everyone knows the stand the Catholic Church takes on abortion. And so Pope John Paul said it isn't right. And of course, at that time, Cardinal Ratzinger was his right-hand man who's revised the new Catholic catechism. And so now Benedict XVI is picking up on that and says unbaptized babies will not go to limbo, which they taught in the past, but will go directly to heaven. And that's from all groups, all children. Now, why did they teach it? Because Jesus loved little children. He said, Allow little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven, Luke 18, 16. He said, Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and he were cast into the sea. Mark 9, verse 42. No doubt about it. Now, why do I believe that little ones are going to go to heaven unbaptized? Because they cannot believe and be baptized, Mark 16, 16, repent and be baptized, Acts 2, 3, 8. They're little infants. They don't know much until they start getting around five years of age. So they're covered until they're old enough to know right from wrong. Now, let me show you why. We all said they're all guilty, including Jack and Rexella, every human being, because of Adam's original sin. Romans 5, 12, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, because we're chips off the old block, Adam. But wait till you get to verse 18 of Romans 5. Therefore is by the offensive one, Adam, judgment came upon all men, the condemnation. But wait. So by the righteousness of one Jesus, the free gift came upon all men. If judgment came upon all men, that means everybody, then the free gift comes upon all men, and we're all covered until the age of accountability, no matter what the religious background of the parents is. Praise oh, the Lord. I love that, yeah. Jack. How beautiful. Now, friends, only a couple times a year do we open the door, and we want to do this because you want to be a missionary with us around the world and be our partner. I have the 800 number on there, and I want to not only read some letters, but also let you know about testimonies sent to us. The most important work that the Van Ippies do is preaching the good news of Jesus Christ and preparing us for the future. By partnering with this ministry, I feel privileged to serve the Lord. Dear Dr. and Mrs. Van Ippie, I want to write and thank you for the impact your ministry has had on my life. I found your show. It's been great to know that millions have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. My granddaughter has been saved by watching your TV program. She is 16 years old. When I partnered with this ministry, it's helped me to strengthen my love for Christ even more and to, to really take a better walk with Jesus. Uh, friends, you can be a partner with us and be a missionary around the world every single week. For $20 or more a month, you can actually enter into this ministry. We need you because we want to continue on your station and expand. And Jack, I know you have a verse for what we are asking it's right now. It's only $0.70 cents a day, and we reach every nation on earth. Please stand behind us. It's Galatians 6.6. 6. 
let them that are taught in God's word support those who teach God's word. It's there. Now, when you become our partner, make the 800 number call. I will be sending you every single month an intelligence briefing, our bi-monthly magazine, and a couple of wonderful DVDs, 35 Starling Questions Answered, and the Soul Winner's Crown, a couple of wonderful pins to wear, perhaps today. All of this will be yours when you become our partner. So please make the call right now. All right, friends. So many global headlines to share with you and um, this again is about China. We kind of focus on China right now because of what just happened there with the earthquake. Over one and a half million people in China are homeless because of that horrible earthquake and now we want to give you a little bit of an update about the aftershock. Deadly China aftershock destroys 71,000 homes. That's just the aftershock. People were killed also. And then it's not just there, but around the world, terrible things are happening. Twisters on record-setting path. Record-setting. Yes, this could be our deadliest time for storms right here in America. That was in Iowa. How, how sad. And then again, Fed's forecast, bad hurricane season again. Now, this could be a really, really uh, time in to watch all these things, Jim. Rexella, the miracle of all this is that all three of these signs were predicted by Jesus just before he returns to set up his kingdom on earth. First of all, earthquakes. He mentioned there would be earthquakes in diversified places simultaneously in Matthew 24, 7, Mark 13, 8, and Luke 21, 11. And then... He talked about all these typhoons and hurricanes in Luke 21, 25, when he said the sea and the waves will be roaring. And then about all these twisters, Christ said in Luke 21, 11, fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Verse 26, men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things which are coming to pass from the heavens. It's here. Well, you know, China again. We're all focused on that because the Olympics is over there. And could the Olympics coming up very soon be in danger of terrorism? All right, Interpol warns terrorism at Beijing Olympics a real possibility. And Beijing Olympics nuclear dirty bomb fears. Well, you know, that is something that everyone must keep their eye on over there and stop it before it starts, Jack. I have a real fear for what could happen there. I really do. And I've been praying about the situation. Now, again, it's one of the signs Christ gave. He said in Matthew 24, Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it Noah's day? Genesis 6, 11, the whole world was filled with violence and terrorism. It's going to be just like that when I return, Jesus said. And it has been that way all through the Middle East, as you well know. And I'll tell you, folks, in Luke 21, 9, Jesus says, when you hear of wars and revolutions, wars and terrorism, don't be frightened. These things must first come before what? When it's coming full blast and it's arrived, he said, then look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Verse 28, that's the redemption of these bodies, Romans 8, 23, when he says, come up hither and we sweep through the heavenlies to meet him. Uh, in a twinkling of an eye, 187 trillion billions of miles, all in 11 one hundredths of a second, the twinkling of an eye. Ooh, Jack, that's so wonderful. Well, NASA and our astronauts continue to amaze all of us as they go farther and farther into space. The moon or bus, now that's the ISS. And uh, they want to do a lot more concerning the moon. But look at what they just accomplished. Journey to Mars. And that was 423 million mile trip. Whoa. Wow. And they accomplished it. It landed safely. They were a little uptight, uh, fearful that it might not, but it did. Congratulations on that great feat. And again, the search for for terrestrial alien life forms. Aha, Jack, I'm going to talk to you about that. Vatican, it's okay to believe in aliens. Don't put limits on God's creativity. Well, certainly that is very, very true. And uh, Jack, we don't have time today to talk much about aliens, but I want to zero in on that sometime. Oh, we will. I'm going to be telling folks about it. 
First of all, Joel chapter 2, verses 30 and 31 mentions signs in space when Messiah comes. And that's our Christ. And then you find it again in Acts chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. Jesus mentioned terrible things happening in space and to the moon in Matthew 24, 29. But the thing I really want you to hear from the lips of Jesus is Luke 21, 25. He said, there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, in space. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Verse 27. Now, Rexella, God reveals a lot of things to me. I'm going to show you next week, tell everyone about it, why I believe that there's life in space. I think the Vatican said, don't minimize God. I'm going to show you why I believe it. And I think we're going to find out what a lot of things that have been happening in space and why they've been happening is taking place. Whoa, Jack, that's, I want to hear that Next one, week. don't you? <laughs> well, at the, uh, the um, Israeli Museum, the most complete Dead Sea Scroll ever found is now on display. Take a look, Israel Museum displays rare Dead Sea Scroll. Now that's the Isaiah Scroll. Something else very interesting. Light bulb in California glows for 107 years. That's in Livermore, California. 107 <laughs> years without burning out. Can't believe it. Dying for clean water. Oh, my heart goes out to these people. Too much of the world cannot have this available to them. They need it. And surgeons give hope to blind with successful bionic eye operations. Good and bad things, friends, are happening. We need to pray about that. Yeah, but these that. are all going to be good things, Frank all, right, all right. That Isaiah scroll is a masterpiece. You know about the Dead Sea Scrolls? Because this is the Isaiah scroll, and it tells how... The Prince of Peace is going to come, Isaiah 9, verse 6, and we know that to be Jesus. And verse 7 says, of his government and peace there shall be no end. When Jesus comes, it's going to be a change here because he's going to stop Armageddon of Revelation 16, 16. He puts a stop to those who are destroying the earth and destroying one another, Revelation 11, 15. And what they found emphasized in the Isaiah scroll was chapter 2, verse 4. They shall beat their swords and the plowshares and their spears into the pruning hooks. Now, when Jesus returns, we come back with him. Jude, verse 14. But he deposits us in the holy city hanging above the earth. Now, watch this because here we have a light bulb that has lasted for 107 years. We don't need light bulbs in the holy city. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and Christ the Lamb is the light thereof forever and forever. Water, we don't have to worry about polluted water anymore. Why? Because in Revelation 22, verse 1, talking about that glorious holy city, it says, out of the throne of God there was pure water like crystal. And never again will we have to worry. And on earth, the perfecting eyes right now. Isaiah chapter 35, verses 5 and 6. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, then shall the layman leap as an heart, and the tongues of the tongue side shall sing. It's going to be a period of health like we've never known. That goes for a thousand years. Then Christ is recommissioned, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, and then he rules here forever and forever and forever. On earth, yes. Can I prove that? Luke 1, 32, 33, and Revelation 11, 15. Oh, yes. Is that astounding? Are you ready for that wonderful time when the Lord will return? Let me just say, friends, this is the time that we really want you to pray with Jack, open your heart to the Lord, and be ready for when he comes again. Jack, give us the invitation, please. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You want that peace now that passes all understanding? Look at me. Lord Jesus, you came as the Savior, and soon you're coming again as the Prince of Peace. My heart has been heavy, and Lord, I need peace. Will you look at me right now and pray this, Lord Jesus? Thank you for your crucifixion. Thank you for all of my sins that you bore. 
Thank you for all of the agony you suffered to save me. Now, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart. I receive you today as my personal Savior. Come in, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I trust you prayed that prayer. Are you filled with depression, anxiety, things in your life you want to get rid of? I promise when the Lord comes in, He takes it away. I'll send you free this little booklet. If you write to me this week and say, I prayed that prayer, Rexella, let me hear from you. All right, friends, I just want to say that once again, we really want to open this door very wide to you to become our partner because we want you one day when you're in heaven to have a reward for reaching souls. If we don't open the door to you, you won't. So become our partner, partnership with us, and we'll send you these wonderful things, a couple of DVDs or videos, and also our bi-monthly magazine and our monthly intelligence briefing Jack puts together um, things from around the world that keep us updated. All right, these beautiful, beautiful pens, a couple will be in the mail also when you become our partner. If you are our partner, please think about giving more than 20 or 50 or 100 a month because we've got to buy some new equipment. The government has mandated that we must uh, send it out digitally across the world. So we're going to do that. And Jack, we praise the Lord for our partner. And $20 a month means 70 cents a day, and it makes you a global missionary to every nation on earth. Praise the Lord. And it will help us to stay on your station. Airtime Worldwide TV expansion and investment for souls and so much more. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can become our partner. Chuck. My dear friend, we'd love for you to become a partner with doctors Jack and Rex Sullivan MP. By donating 20, 50, or $100 or more monthly, call toll free 24 hours a day. 1-800-JVI-7777 or in the U.S. send your monthly donation to Jack Vanapee Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your monthly donation to Jack Vanapee Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, dear friend, Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. This will all be in the mail when you become our partner. And besides that, you know, the best part, you become a global missionary with us souls that you'll meet in heaven one day because you were a partner with Jack and Nippy Ministries. Make the call or write to us this week. We really need you to help us to accomplish all God wants us to do. And now, friends, I just want to say that you can also visit Jack Vanippy Ministries on the website. There you see it. And also you can download us for your iPod. Keep in contact with us all the time. I just want to leave you with this very, very good thought. The measure of a man is not what he does on Sunday, but rather who he is. Monday through Saturday. Look forward to being your home again next week. And remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.